Welcome back to Oddities and Details. This is a series where I talk about interesting tidbits and assorted intricacies I've noticed in pieces of media. And it's about LEGO City Undercover again. And while this is a sequel to my previous video, you don't have to watch it in order. I'm just letting you know that it exists. So let's start immediately with the fact that when you shoot something with a color gun, the animation for it is usually it's shaking or just no animation at all. But there are a lot of props with the unique animations for being colored. It's a little inconsistent, however, because one prop, the lifesaver stand, plays an animation in the level, but doesn't in the open world. You know the building in Paradise Sands with the party inside? You can see all the silhouettes if you open the scanner. I managed to hug the wall so close that it clips a bit through, and that lets us see that they don't have any textures. In the Switch version, when I did the same thing in the PC version, the silhouettes all had generic civilian textures. The 17 cats you can rescue throughout the city are reused models from LEGO Harry Potter. The drum set in Rex's cell is a reference to the game that TT Fusion worked on before Undercover, LEGO Rock Band. This is evidenced by the fact that the sounds associated with it are under a folder titled Rock Band. Why does the hangar in the airport have no collision? I have no guesses this time around, I'm genuinely asking this. The image on the communicator changes depending on how you're using it. For example, when you start a detective trail, the image shown on the communicator is also a trail. This detail makes sense in the Wii U version because while your focus is on the gamepad, you could still look at the TV and see Chase. But in the remaster, it's impossible to see Chase while these menus are open, unless you're in multiplayer, so this detail can get lost. The train and the tram are indestructible forces. Not even if you shoot them with a super ray gun, which one-shots every other vehicle. To put this to the test, I put the maximum amount of police mobs on the train track, and it went through all of them like they're made of leg- This is kind of an obvious detail, but every district of the city is based on real-life cities. This is corroborated by the internal file names of them. For example, San Francisco Residential, Bridge Brooklyn Bridge, Bridge Golden Gate, New York Central Park, New York Chinatown, New York Little Italy, New York Times Square, and I'm assuming Wisconsin Farmlands and Wisconsin Forest. This pre-release screenshot of the police station shows the garages with semi-transparent doors. In the final game, they're solid blue. There's a 4D ride based on LEGO City at Legoland, which has a promo art that feels suspiciously similar to the art for LEGO City Undercover. Just a quick reminder, if you like this video so far, consider subscribing. Alright, moving on back to details. Detail 41, Chase Farts. Sounds like Stinky I must be getting close to Stinky. Where's Stinky? Uh -oh. They've got Stinky. Stinky. Grab Stinky before I can find him. If you play as the detective or Dorlock Holmes, the communicator is replaced with a magnifying glass. In the 3DS version, every police officer uses a magnifying glass because the communicator wasn't invented yet. The warp to player button is way too exploitable. It can be used to glitch out of bounds and it's even used in speedruns. I'm assuming this happens because the teleport zone passes through walls and ceilings. The heads on Mount Cashmore as is a Mount Rushmore parody are based on the four classic LEGO themes, Pirates, Castle, Western, and Space. In the LEGO Dimensions version, the head representing space was updated to have the actual classic helmet piece. After you get the keys to Dumby's office and Honey Goes Plays video games, if you listen to his dialogue, he is very obviously playing a LEGO game. And it's so meta. I'm sure they talked more in the movie. Oh, I found one of those special bricks. I don't know how they managed to keep this series so fresh. What'll happen when they run out of movies to adapt? 
Imagine how cool these games would be if they were set in a huge city you could explore. Oh, wow. That would be the best. I love how detailed the buildings are in LEGO City. Walking past all the storefronts and entrances makes the city feel alive. Some buildings even have music coming from inside. That attention to detail is why I put this game over LEGO Batman 2 in my mind. The red car ride plays Five Nights at Freddy's music. Actually, it's from the 1875 play Carmen by George Bazet. It's from FNAF. Did you know there are unique second player drop-in animations? <laughs> they wouldn't. There are studs hidden in the balconies of the museum level. You have to be an astronaut and jetpack across to get them. The graphics upgrade that the remaster bring to the game is a bit buggy in some places. It wasn't a perfect port. Like, if Ted Baxter is an NPC in a car, he has his old torso, but when you get him out, it switches to the new torso. The new vehicles added to the remaster look weird. Like, the colorable bricks are almost fluorescent for whatever reason. The road markings in Cherry Tree Hills don't have any shading, and as a result, glow when they're in shadow. If the opening postcard loading screens go for long enough, it will start to play the loading screen music. In rare cases, a 7th postcard with Frank and Dumby will show up. If you press any button to start, the main menu appears. Video games. The odd thing is, if you press it early enough, it will glitch to the style used in the classic LEGO games. Every disguise has a unique zipline tool. As I touched on before, there is extra dialogue for when the bridges are closed early on in the game. Hey! Does this look like a public walkway? No, it doesn't. It looks like a work site. So scrap! Hey there! They've closed the tunnel while they check Heritage Bridge for damage. These gatekeepers also have lines for if you ignore them and walk past them. It's dangerous in there! Are you crazy? Hey! Beat it, will you? Hey! It ain't safe back there! There's no use you waiting around. Get off that bridge! It isn't safe! Except for the officer at Auburn Bay Bridge, because there's an invisible wall here that is impossible to get past. But he does in fact have dialogue for this that can be heard if you mod or glitch yourself to the other side. You aren't allowed there! I can't even drive! Stop! I'll get in trouble! Wait! You aren't allowed across! Bucky Butler was said to be arrested by Chase two years ago, but he doesn't appear in The Chase Begins, which is also supposed to take two years ago. That was a missed opportunity for some continuity. An opportunity for continuity was taken in some of the super builds. For example, in The Chase Begins, you have to build the lighthouse on Abelchus Island, and then in the console version, it's already built. Continuity! But there's also builds that don't line up, like the radar dish on Apollo Island is already built in The Chase Begins, but you have to build it again in Undercover. That's all the details I have for now. I don't think I'm gonna make a part 3, but if I find more, I'll probably put them in a YouTube short or something. As always, if you have any details yourself, let me know in the comment section. I read every single one. Thanks for watching, and see ya.